Hi there, Tony here. In this video, we're going to show you how you can install your 10th generation Intel processor. That's the Comet Lake aka LGA 1200. So let's get down to business. But before we do so, make sure to destroy the like button, hit the subscribe button and do not forget to ring the bell to get notified for any future videos that we publish. So let's get started. For this guide, we're going to be using the Intel processor that's um, 10400F i5. We're going to be using this motherboard from Gigabyte, the B460 chipset, that's M, because it's a micro one. And the other digits are DS3H. And also we're going to be using the sniper memory for coming from Gisco. We usually start with the motherboard. So we open it. Remove the SATA cable and remove the motherboard. If there is any additional information, like the I.O. shield, etc., we also remove that. That's the I.O. shield, some additional information, and we have a CD. Who, who uses CD any longer? I mean, why the, the motherboard manufacturers don't have like a small flash drive or something that's not going to be so much expensive who has a CD-ROM in today these days so i'm going to put that trying to close the motherboard box let me open it some people recommend that you need to have like um gloves, anti-static gloves, etc. For all my years in IT, I never had to use gloves. Again, we cannot have an unboxing video where we don't use Ferramonti. So I'm going to open the processor. Bye Ferramonti. Okay, some information. What you need to be extra careful is with this side. So that's the thermoconducting paste. I usually remove the, the power cable of the fan. Put it somewhere here. I'll take the processor, the processor. Usually you have to be careful not to leave fingerprints on top because it could have thermoconducting issues, etc. That's what people say, but honestly, I don't believe that's true, especially for such processors that we're not going to overclock. So what you do now is you need to be careful with those two pins located here. Okay. So what you do is you take those pins and you try to align it based on the two pins on the motherboard. So you gently put it like that and you just like move it a little bit and you put the IO cover and you see this one popped up. It, I did not remove it, it popped up. That's like additional safety mechanism not to bend any of the pins on the motherboard because if there is bending on the pins the chances is motherboard is dead so the next thing you need to do is install the fan the, the thing that i'm usually doing is i'm locating where the cpu fan uh, connector is located because what i'm doing is i Put it like that so I don't have like extra uh, space or something. I make sure that it's on all the holes and what I'm doing is I'm pressing, I'm usually starting with the one that's on the far side next to the RAM, pressing this one, I hear a click, do the same for the other one, again click, this one, click and finally I do this one, it's most convenient for me. Okay, now everything is ticked. Finally what I do is I just tie the connector 
so it doesn't go into the fan pin or something, it can really spin. Sometimes I may use a zip tie to connect this to uh, a connector to, to the power supply cables or so. It really depends on the cable management. Some people may prefer to have it all around the fan. It really depends on how you want to have the sticker of the Intel uh, standing. In this case, I usually prefer to be in front of me, not that it matters. I'm taking the RAM sticks, which have this nice Gisco sticker. Okay, so you should be reading the manual to see to which slots you should populate based on the, your configuration. If you have like one RAM stick, which is the first one, if you have two RAM sticks that you want to, for them to work in dual channel configuration, then you need to put it into the corresponding area. In this case, I can see it on the menu and also on the motherboard itself. There is like this, for the first um, two channel is slot A2 and B2. So you need to be very careful or on where is this pin here. You can only go one way. So this side here is shorter than this side. So be careful, don't try to push it and destroy the pin. Even if you somehow succeed, you're going to destroy the RAM stick and the chance is you're also going to destroy the motherboard. Just click. And just click. That's it, installation done. So once you have a power supply, you need to power the eight pin slot located here. and power up the 24 pin located here. Again, you need to be careful on the configuration. So it's, it has like this zip here. You need to be sure it goes into the correct configuration. Finally, we need to power up the power supply. And what you do is you take a scalpel and what you do is you see here you have like the power, power buttons, the reset buttons and all the rest. So you're looking for the power button. And then you click like that and it's going to run. Now, if we have a monitor, we're going to hook it up to a monitor and you're going to see a screen. If we also have like a, a speaker, you may hear the nice sound like beeps, but that's for another video. Okay, so hope you learned how to install your new processor onto the motherboard. If you liked our videos, make sure to click the like button. Also, do not forget to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified for any future videos. I was your host, Tony. Till next time.